In this video lecture, we're going to take a look at taking a raw storage device, uh, partitioning it, putting a file system on it, and then mounting it uh, under the standard Unix file hierarchy. So we'll kind of go through the whole process that you would go through if you had a new hard drive. Um, so let's take a look. Right now I'm in a root prompt, and I'm going to see what disks are available to my system. And if I do F disk dash L, you'll notice a few things is that I've got uh, dev sda so i have my primary system uh, hard drive and you'll notice that it has some um, file systems on it already but you'll also notice that there's this 68 megabyte uh, dev sdb system uh, or drive that's attached to my system and you'll notice that it actually does not contain a valid partition table it's just a drive uh, usually if you buy a drive at a store they don't come that way uh, I'm using VirtualBox, so I just created a new virtual hard drive and mounted that so I can kind of demonstrate um, or, uh, yeah, and actually brought that into the virtual environment so I can demonstrate how to um, partition and then mount the drive. So, uh, if I wanted to, I could just get some information about that drive using FDisk. Again, pretty standard. Use the FDisk-L to see what's currently available to your system. And so what I want to do is I want to... Uh, go in here and put a partition on this. I'm just going to put one partition on this that takes up the whole drive. So, the command uh, to do that is fdisk, and we'll just do sdb. And this puts me into um, a uh, interactive mode where I can do some stuff. And what you'll notice is that uh, this is going to give me some errors, and you know it says it's not a valid partition table. It doesn't really know what to do. Um, so I'm going to go in and hit M for help. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, create a partition on this disk. Using the letter N to go in to create a new partition. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and basically just use all of the defaults for this because it's going to be quicker. So P for primary. Uh, default is 1. I'll just go for 1. It's going to allow it to choose where to um, set the, uh, uh, basically where these the, the drive should uh, start the file system and end the file system. Or sorry, the partition, start the partition. And then you'll notice that it has the information it needs. And if I want, when I'm done, I can write table to disk and exit. Hit W. And we should be good. And so if I want to see if this worked, I can do fdisk uh, l slash dev slash sdb. Um, and what you'll notice is it actually set this drive up so that it is workable for me and put a partition on it, um, which is nice. And it was pretty straightforward. And notice that, again, the, the, the goal here is not to go over all the details of fdisk and partitioning. Uh, but just to show you that once we get a raw device, we can go ahead and just kind of start to uh, work with it and kind of introduce you in the most basic sense to these tools. So if I want to put a file system on here, the next step is I can use the command mkfs uh, to put a file system on there. And I'll do vfet. And we'll go with sdb because that's the device that I want to put it on. Uh, and there's only one partition. And it gives us some information real quick and again you'll notice um, if I check on my device um, everything should be set up the only thing now that I haven't done is I haven't actually gone ahead and um, mounted my device I can't use it it's not available to my system how do I know that well the command to mount a, a drive in, in Unix is mount and if I do mount, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of stuff here in the mount command. Uh, the only one I'm concerned with is dev sda1. You'll notice that this is actually a drive that's mounted to my system. Everything else, um, these components that are here, uh, you'll see some things related to the dev file system um, and some other things utilized by the kernel. Uh, so it's stuff that we don't really need to concern ourselves with. We only want to look and see which actual physical drives are mounted. And notice nowhere in here is sdb uh, mounted. So, uh, let's change that. If I look at the root directory, you're going to notice that there's a couple of folders up here. Notice there's a directory called media. 
Um, there's also one called mount, M-N-T. And when we mount a hard drive into the Unix uh, file system hierarchy, we need to say, okay, take this device and make it available at this point in the hierarchy. So usually what we do is we create <coughs> a folder. So if you look at like this directory in a dash L output, you'll notice, oops, <laughs> if we look at the root directory, you'll notice that <coughs> mount is just a directory and media is just a directory. But what we want to do is we can pick one of these directories and I'll, I'll use MNT. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll make the drive available at that uh, directory. Notice it's empty. And what I want to do is say, okay, take the device SDB and mount it there. These are good errors to leave in the lecture. So if you notice the error that I had been making was I was just mounting the uh, raw drive and I wasn't giving the actual partition. And if you note now, the drive is mounted. And if I do the mount command, you'll notice at the end that there is uh, the first, parti first partition on this device uh, is mounted at the directory slash mount. And if I do um, a disk free, it tells me how much space is available on my primary hard drive and how much space is available on my small mounted drive. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with the mount command. Uh, if we look at the mount man page, you'll notice there are a number of um, options that you can provide. Um, there's a lot of really good options, but the one that might be of most use is dash R, which will allow you to mount a file system read only. So that's one to keep in mind. So make sure that you, you take a look through the mount man page so you can see all the different options. And there are a ton of them. Um, but again, mounting something read-only is, is probably the most important thing. So if I go ahead and look now at, um, uh, let's see, the mount directory, uh, you'll notice I get no information. If I do a dash LA. I get no information, but notice that I mounted this drive as root, and it's actually mounted as root. So let's go ahead and unmount that drive. And the way you, you unmount a drive is you use the unmount command, and you just give, in this case, you uh, can give the mount point to which it's mounted to. Oops, and I meant U mount. So I'm making all types of mistakes, but that's okay. Uh, oh, it's getting late. And I should probably stop recording video lectures. So I gave the wrong mount point. So I have that drive mounted at slash mount. I say U mount slash mount, and now it's gone. And if I look, you'll notice that dev S, uh, SDB is gone. So that's pretty good to note. And um, the issue that I had, though, was that I was actually mounting that drive um, as a different user. So now if I wanted to mount it myself, I can say, okay, let's mount um, my drive, sdb, at slash mount. Oops, and again, I keep forgetting to put the partition in there. And now that drive is mounted. And if I do an ls dash um, la slash mount, you'll notice that it's still mounted there. Uh, well, the, yeah, the root, okay. Again, getting late, but you can tell that the ownership of this directory, right, of the mount directory is root. But can I put a file in there? No, because permission is denied. So even though I mounted it, um, I mounted it via sudo and it mounted with root privileges. So one of the things you have to be aware of is that when you mount a drive, is how do you mount it with a specific user's uh, permissions. And uh, if you want to make sure that you can um, mount a drive as your own user uh, ID, uh, the command is going to look like this. You still need to use sudo. And we're going to do all of the things we just did. We'll mount it to the mount point. But I'm going to pass some options in. And specifically, uh, I'm going to pass in my user ID and uh, my group ID. 
so that this would mount as uh, user JSON and group JSON. And now if I look at the mount directory, you'll notice that it's mounted um, as me. And you'll notice that if I uh, try to touch a file in there, it works. And there it is. You want to see more information about it. Uh, it is the appropriate set of permissions. So there's a bunch more information that we can talk about related to mounting drives and permissions of drives and options. Uh, but for now, I just want to keep this to be the most basic. In many cases, Ubuntu handles auto uh, mounting of, of drives pretty well. Uh, but there are times when you'll want to know how to do that process yourself. And it's also good to understand what the process is that's being automated um, by those uh, auto mount demons. One final note, if you're using the mount command to mount a drive, every time you reboot your machine, you're going to have to manually re-enter that mount command, or you could write a little shell script to execute automatically. But there is a file on the system called etsy slash fs tab, and this file um, is related to automatically mounting and um, uh, setting up the appropriate options for drives when they are mounted. So there is a system facility already available. Uh, the file is located at the FS tab on your system. Uh, you can do a man of the FS tab file just by issuing the command man FS tab. And what you'll see is that the format of the FS tab is uh, one drive per line. Uh, and each of the options uh, on that line are separated um, out so that you have uh, basically a column based and um, a row based system similar to like a cron tab file. And basically you just put in that